Well, this year we're thrilled that the Global Citizen Festival will be headlined by a combination of Janet Jackson together with The Weeknd, Cardi B, Janelle Monet, Sean Mendes, and special guest John Legend. But this year we're really focused. We're three years into the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And there was a new report released by the World Bank this week that suggested while we've made amazing progress in Southeast Asia and India, we're actually off track in achieving the sustainable development goals across sub-Saharan Africa. And we have two years to get it back on track. That's why we need an urgent movement of citizens calling on heads of state, but also calling on business to take action to achieve the United Nations What's Sustainable happened? Development Goals. What's happened in Sub-Saharan Africa? What threw it off? Well, there's conflict in northern Nigeria. There's conflict in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Often where there's pockets of conflict, you see a lack of progress in achieving human development. And so all the data suggests that if we don't actually promote peace and stability, if we don't actually also make sure that, uh, that, that there is true investment in human capital, health and education in those markets, then we're not going to achieve the sustainable development goals. Hans, why, why does Verizon partner? As a first of all, I have work, been working with the sustainable development goals for a long time, the millennial development goals. And what I've seen is, of course, that we have a purpose that is just colliding is that technology is one of the most sustainable solutions for some of this uh, sort of combating some of the larger problems on this earth, earth as well as the people in most need. Technology is actually a solution. Mobility, broadband and cloud can actually bring down the cost. You can deliver education, healthcare. Uh, all these inequalities can be sort of part of being using technology as a foundation. And, uh, so this is straight to our strategy and of course we are now doing a big thing with education. We're going to invest 400 million US dollars in education in the US the next three years. And basically two million uh, children or youth will actually get uh, both technology, free technology from us, STEM education as well as sort of technology driven curriculum which is what we are doing, but it's part of our strategy. And that's why our purpose is the same. We want to combat some of the larger challenges we have on this earth. This is part of our strategy. You, the, there's always this uh, uh, sort of a, a, a discussion that I see highlighted between education and, and health care. And it seems that you'd say, no, we got to do health care first and then do education. But there are proponents of, of the other way that you take care of the health care, but you don't put in a, a, a system of education, you're healthy, but you've, you've got no economy, you've got, and then it feeds back on, on the health care. It's almost like you mentioned, you mentioned health care first and then education, Hans mentioned education first right. and then health care, so uh, it's, it has to be simultaneous, doesn't it? It is simultaneous. It, it's not a dichotomy, Joe. I think that the key, as you see how South Korea grew rich post the 1950s, it was an investment in that stage, actually from USAID and from the first World Bank grant that was given to South Korea was actually in education. I was with uh, President Jim Kim of the World Bank yesterday and he talked about his own experience about getting education, actually also getting quality health care and how that enabled the economy to grow. And so I think that's absolutely essential. Yesterday we hosted a really important gathering at the UN with uh, President Macron of France with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada and Theresa May of the UK. And this was all on the topic of education. The great news is that now the world is starting to invest more in education. Earlier this year, President Macron hosted the replenishment of the Global Partnership for Education in Senegal alongside Macky Sall. They raised $2.3 billion in new financing for education, the most amount of money ever raised on this issue. And so this is the time where the world is starting to step up on education. And I agree with you. It's absolutely not a dichotomy. But then I think about, you know, water and you, how do you go to school if, if your mother's taking six hours to go get water? So it's well, well that's why the sustainable development goal framework is so important, yeah. because these 17 goals and 169 indicators are all interrelated. Mm -hmm. You have to provide food, education, water and sanitation, gender equality. All of these have to work hand in hand. Daunting. It is.